Please welcome the legendary Richard Roper. Hey, Richard, you're on something called the Artie Lang Show. Go figure that. How about that? I, in the immortal words of Humphrey Bogart in Casablanca, I was misinformed. <laughs> <laughs> I came to the Artie Lang Show for the waters. Right. And by the way, just as a point of note, J.J. Uh, Watt, little known fact, J.J. Uh, Watt of the Houston, Texas, is a blogger for Bon Appetit. So there are a couple of defensive ends <laughs> oh, out there who know how to write. <laughs> <laughs> a blogger for Bon Appetit. I'd like that gig. What Why a gig. Not? What a great gig that would be to be a blogger for Bon Appetit magazine. J.J.'s world. <laughs> J.J. Watt. Well, listen, man, this is the time to talk to you. You're an expert in anything. Brent, are you a movie fan, Brent? Big time. Yeah? Big time. Uh, now, okay, flat out, you're the guy who told me that Lincoln, uh, before I had seen it, was just a great American movie about the last couple of months of his life and could give, I think you said this, could give a lesson to today's politicians on, on, how, to, on how to be a politician. I mean, that's impressive acting and just impressive people from back then, right? I mean, how interesting was that? Yeah, and it's uh, pretty cool that, uh, you know, each film uh, last night at the Golden Globes, you know, they get someone to come out there and introduce the movie. Yeah. They get, like, a pretty big star to go, you know, uh, Django Unchanged is the story of da 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 da, -da. And, <laughs> and Spielberg just plays the trump card. He brings out Clinton to introduce <laughs> his right? that's, he's, he's, he's That's where he goes, I have a better Rolodex than everyone in the room. <laughs> right? I mean, unless... Jesus came out to introduce <laughs> Life of Pi as a new look at spirituality. Spielberg wins. I mean, so the, the, gold, <laughs> the Golden Globes in some way is making a move on the Oscars because the Oscars with, you know, nine films nominated but only five directors get nominated. So, I mean, look, if you have nine films nominated for Best Picture and you only nominate five directors for Best Director, someone, at least one person, is getting ripped off. I mean, well, that's true. And here's the other thing, Artie. It's the reason, one of the reasons why everybody talks about, oh, the bar's open at the Golden Gloves. Trust me, everybody at the Academy Awards knows how to get a smoke and a drink if they want one. Before the <laughs> yeah, there's a, there, there was a reason Nicholson always had sunglasses on in the front <laughs> row of the Oscars. Exactly. Yeah. He, you know, he was seeing three Billy Crystals. But <laughs> right. here's the thing. As a TV show, it works a lot better because people forget the Golden Globes, they honor... TV as well as movies. Yeah. So every category features a bunch of celebrity nominees. Every right. single category. Academy Awards, half of the categories are best sound mixing, best foreign short, <laughs> best animated film. So you get all these categories where no one's ever heard of the nominees, no one's seen any of the work, and nobody cares about the speeches. But with the Golden Globes, when they're not doing a movie award, they're saying, best actor in a sitcom. And people are going, okay, Alec Baldwin against John Cryer. I can relate to that. <laughs> well, that, that's the thing. How long before the evil uh, whip comes down uh, from network executives and says, listen, the sound mixing award is getting moved to the Friday afternoon luncheon? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, they should just give out five awards anyway during the primetime show, don't you think? Yeah, absolutely. And I don't know why they don't, because... It's not working the way they're doing it. Every single year, the ratings for the Academy Awards, they're still big, but they go down every single year, and they keep trying to do different things. Let's have 10 nominated films. Let's get young people who have absolutely no sense of humor to host it because <laughs> we think that'll uh, appeal to younger people. Right. Let's try this. Let's try that. But until they shorten it from three and a half to, you know, to four hours to two hours, it's, it's never going to get the huge ratings. And with the Golden Globes, I mean, give them credit. You know, right. it's one good category after another, and you get, like, you know, in the middle of it, you'll get a Will Ferrell doing a funny routine. Yeah. Yeah, they, they, whenever they go with hip over funny, it never works out. Like James James Franco or somebody like that, it, it, it doesn't work. Uh, you hadn't seen Les Miserables the last time we spoke. Uh, what'd you think? You know, I, I'm, you know, I'm one of those guys that say, like, I'm not a huge musical fan, but at least when you see it, you know, on Broadway or here in Chicago, you know, a, a major stage production, it's pretty impressive what they can pull off. Book of Mormon is freaking hilarious. Right, you know? right. But as soon as they make it into a movie, you can't help but have that moment where you're going like, Russell Crowe is singing right now, and he's dressed like Captain oh. Crunch. This is weird. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> oh my God, the clips I saw, of, I'm glad you brought him up in particular. The clips I saw of Russell Crowe singing, you, you, it's just a knee-jerk douche chill. <laughs> You know, <laughs> because there, there's something very strange about seeing that. And even like Anne Hathaway, who's winning all these awards and, and is getting a little too pleased with herself. <laughs> that classic thing where it's like she's going to win the Academy Award because she's playing, you know, a 19th century French prostitute who can sing. <laughs> it's the gayest role ever. going to win. Also, she's a hot chick who was willing to really get her hair cut with yeah, a knife. Yeah, she got her hair cut with a butter knife. Bold and daring. And of course, 
she's also, you know, in classic Hollywood fashion, she's, a, she's up there at the Golden Globes yesterday. She's actually skinnier now than when she was playing the French prostitute who was about to die. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. She needs a sandwich. I've Half seen her. A sandwich, for God's sake. <laughs> I've seen her in person at Hathaway, and my God, she does. She, she needs. She needs a sandwich. Um, but certain people get away with certain jokes, and certain people get away with certain things in movies. There's a hierarchy and a hypocrisy that just I can't stand. And um, you know, but uh, look, look, that's Hollywood. My partner here, Brent Stover. Brent, you got any? Uh, this is the movie guy. You can yeah. ask a movie question. This is the guy, Brent. Yeah, Richard. What was the best? Uh, what was the best moment for you last night? Because because I thought it was pretty darn good. I thought it was really. Well, I've really seen Richard's. Funny. I've seen Richard's girlfriend, so I got a feeling it had nothing to do with the show. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, and, you know, honestly, Brett. I mean, I thought uh, Tina Fey and Amy Poehler were great. They were great. Post. Yeah. And you know, they had that great combination. You know, you don't want Ricky Gervais. I thought it was just like he was doing that whole look at me. I'm just too cool. Again, too cool for the room. But you know, Amy Poehler and Tina Fey. They're part of the showbiz mainstream, right. but they're not afraid to make a James Cameron joke, which is pretty yeah. cool. You know, I mean, they, they went after people, but in a fun way. So I thought, you know, boom, 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 they were great. Um, as far as, like, you know, the awards, I thought it was pretty cool that Argo won Best Picture and Ben Affleck got Best Director since he got kind of screwed over by the Academy. And uh, Jessica Chastain winning for Zero Dark Thirty because I think she gives a great performance in that movie. Yeah. Now explain to me the James Cameron joke. Uh, did he abuse his wife? Was that no? Really... He's, just, he's just considered the biggest jerk in Hollywood. Oh, he is. Oh, see, I don't know. It goes all the way back to that "I am the king of the world" right. thing, where it's just you know, even in a in a town filled with egos, he's considered to be really egotistical. Oh, no kidding. You know, and, and and you know, just not abusive in terms of like abusive in relationships, but not necessarily you know a friendly guy to work with, someone who treats actors well. I mean, his success is undeniable, but that's, you know, that's, that's pretty good. It's a little bit of an inside shot, but you've know, you got to give him credit for taking that shot. Do you have a problem with the controversy surrounding Zero Dark Thirty in the sense that, I mean, I read a little bit about it. That, okay, uh, the one main guy was tortured, but he wasn't tortured through waterboarding exactly, so, uh, you know, they're taking too much of an artistic license. The guy was tortured. I mean, who cares, right? I mean... Well, you know, here's what, here's what kills me about this. First of all, like, the other day on my radio show, we talked to... Uh, uh, General uh, McCaskill, the, the general who lost it, the four-star general who was the head of the command who lost his gig, you know, kind of had to step down after the Rolling Stone article where, right. he, you know, some of his people. And here's a guy, I mean, war hero, four-star general. His dad was a Korean war hero, Vietnam war hero. He's seen the movie, and he said, okay, fine. Maybe that's not exactly how it went down, but he thought it was a great film. So you got guys like that saying, you know, okay, fine. Some people are saying the waterboarding maybe didn't happen that way. But when you got guys like that saying it's authentic, that's a pretty good ringing endorsement. And for people, even, you know, hey, all due and great respect to, you know, Senator John McCain, who was a POW. Right. But, you know, the, the politicians and the, and the conservatives who are criticizing this are, and, and liberals, and they're saying, well, the CIA says there was never waterboarding. I'm like, they're the CIA. <laughs> so you believe them when they say there was no waterboarding? Yeah. They'll also tell you there's no CIA. Yeah, they'll also tell you there's no aliens buried in the desert out in Arizona. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> I mean, oh, well, we got to trust the CIA because they're not in the, in the uh, business of finding things out through whatever means necessary. At some point, you got to go with the, you know, as far as the directing thing with the Zero Dark Thirty. Stop being a male chauvinist. Stop being offensive towards women and just say, look, this broad, it's surprising, but the broad did a good job, right? And she was great in the movie. It's a great film. I also liked last night, to Brent's question about, you know, cool moments at the Golden Globes, John Goodman, who's in Argo, yeah. brought out Tony Mendez, the real life, yeah. the real life CIA guy who's right. played by Ben Affleck in the movie. And that was really cool. Although I did find it kind of interesting because here's a guy who's, you know, CIA. He's been decorated with every honor, and he didn't know enough to talk into the microphone. Right. Yeah, that was awkward. <laughs> CIA. The one guy. That, the one thing the guy would know how to do would be to speak into the microphone. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Well, a lot of the microphones. Goodman should have planted it in a lamp. That's what I'm saying. A lot of the mics they speak into, they can't see. They don't realize where they are. Through them, right? But the Affleck's a perfect example. How does he not get nominated for Best Director? You know? To me, it, we've come full circle, and now guys are getting snubbed because they got a crowbar in some politically correct choice. Ben Affleck... That's a weird one to me, though, Artie, because Ben Affleck is a... You know, he's a popular guy in Hollywood. He's yeah. not a guy who's got... You know, he's got a reputation of actually being a great guy to work with. And if anything, the Academy usually overfavors actors who become directors... The most famous example, and I know this kills you to this day, Artie, is, you know, 
Ordinary People and Robert Redford yeah. won Best Picture over Scorsese and Raging Bull. That's hard you know? to take. That's hard to it, take. It's hard to take. It and is. And that's because the largest uh, block of the, the voting block of the Academy is actors. So they're like, when an actor can direct, you know, so all of a sudden Kevin Costner wins Best Director for Dances with Wolves. You know, a lot of these actors win for their first film, Mel Gibson for Braveheart. These are all good films. But they usually give extra credit to the actor who becomes the director. It's funny. Scorsese got screwed 10 years to the day almost, uh, right in a row, by Wasps. Here's the young Italian kid from the Lower East Side, Ordinary People and the Wasps with Robert. And, I'm, and I apologize, Brent. But uh, the Wasps <laughs> get him with Ordinary People in 1980. And then 10 years later, Goodfellas, you're like, now, nah, okay, Goodfellas, come on. Right. And then the Wasps come along with Kevin Costner with his. Uh, no oil hair and his waspy charm, and uh, and and they get best director and best picture from him from him then. But, I mean, you know, your that, thoughts? That's kind of historically, you know, you look now like all the polls, like the greatest films of all time. Raging Bulls usually in the top ten. Yeah. Goodfellas, Goodfellas is almost always in the top fifty. You do not see Dances with Wolves. You do not see Ordinary People anywhere near there. So, with a little bit of time, you know, it goes all the way back to you know 1939 when How Green Was My Valley wins Best Picture <laughs> over Gone with the Wind and all these other great films. You know, Citizen Kane gets no wins. So. Through the years, there's been a lot, you know, I mean, to me, one of the worst, you know, uh, injustices of all time is Forrest Gump winning Best Picture over Pulp Fiction. I, no, I agree with that. How about saving, well, I think we talked about this because I don't think you like the ending or maybe it was somebody different, but saving Private Ryan losing out to Shakespeare in Love. Uh, people's problem with Saving Private Ryan is, uh, I mean, look, the first 20 minutes of that film, you should have won any for that alone. Yeah. yeah, and you know, nowadays, I mean, that, you know, we're going back now 15 years, you know, people are used to seeing that kind of, like, shocking violence. Back then, they weren't, and certainly not from a Spielberg film. No. I mean, it was brutal, and it was unbelievable, and it was real, and it was the, I mean, that was the first World War II film that looked like a Vietnam film in terms right. of, like, hey, this is what these guys did. This is what they sacrificed for us. And you look at Shakespeare in Love, and you go, okay, that's an actor romp. You know, it's a nice little romp. The idea that that's, you know, the, but again, to me, there are two things. Harvey Weinstein got behind uh, Shakespeare in Love, and when Harvey, you know, back in the day, especially when, he, when Harvey would campaign for something, he could bring out the vote. And it was an actor's movie, so the actors all like, oh, I could be in Shakespeare in Love. I'll, I'll give that the vote. Right. Well, I'll, I'll tell you what, uh, that still aggravates the hell out of me with Gwyneth Paltrow in that commercial going, I hear you're a poet and write for plays. <laughs> oh, I hear you're a poet and write for plays. As soon as you hear abroad, like with some connections out in the Hamptons doing that accent, <laughs> you know, she's getting. The, and any young actress will probably tell you when Harvey Weinstein gets behind you, something's going to happen that's going to happen. Hey, now. Hey, uh, can you hang on for a break? No Thanks, problem. Richard. We're going to come back and uh, more with Richard Roper and uh, Brent Stover and uh, everybody else here uh, on the Audie Lang Show in a little bit. Come.